we'll look at the no, box. Yeah. On air, welcome everybody. Uh, we have a uh, chock full agenda tonight. Um, and one of our members, Muriel, is coming in from heaven the way I did at the first meeting. Uh, so, uh, hello, Muriel. Uh, she's dialed in but has no video connection. So, if you want to do hand signs to her and won't work, you actually have to talk loud in the microphone so she can hear everything that you're saying because that way she can vote. If she misses something, then she can't vote. So, make sure you're clear and distinct and help her along with that. Uh, the Thank first you. item on the agenda is the continued hearing special permit concept plan uh, for the subdivision. And we, we have uh, two members who cannot vote, to, one member out of one member who cannot vote. So one, two, members out. two members out, one member can't vote. So if we are to approve the open space plan, we have just enough votes. Uh, so I want to give the applicant the chance to say, let's postpone. But it's your call. Okay. No, we'll continue. Okay. Jennifer, any update? Uh, no. Nope. Uh, well, there was some um, additional materials in your packet from. There was some additional materials in your packet from um, REC Hopkinton. Um, I believe they submitted um, a letter and a plan showing what they would propose as a conventional subdivision if the board chose to go down that route. Um, other than that, there was no additional information and I believe it was just up to the board how they would want to proceed at this point. So just for those who, lo who missed the last episode of Hopkinton planning, <laughs> uh, it was determined by town council that under open space plan, we were not allowed, that the emergency connector did not count as a road, and we were not permitted to do the waiver of the two cul-de-sacs. So we presented a theoretical, I'm looking at Jennifer so she can correct me if I'm wrong, which was if the same plan was submitted, got through CONCOM for approvals for the crossing, and we felt that there was enough um, exceptional circumstances such as the granting of space to the town, et cetera, that we would have the right to basically approve the same plan as a conventional plan. Correct, but the board would have to deny the special Correct. permit first. Correct. So that's what you missed at the last episode. So tonight, hopefully for this stage, will be the season finale <laughs> <laughs> until the beginning of the next season when we get go on to the next stage. Any questions? Uh, okay. From what I was reading and when I was looking at the video, I thought the open space plan was still a possibility. And what you just said made it sound like it does The open space plan as submitted, we don't have the authority to approve. As submitted. As submitted, but, correct. But at one point, they had mentioned um, coming back and making changes to the open space right, plan. Right, but that is not what's in front of us. Okay, so that can't be changed at this point? We don't have a submission to okay. change that at this point. Okay, turn it over to the... Um, so I can spend a few minutes maybe just going through what we resubmitted so you have right. that information as we proceed forward. So um, in response to the last meeting, as you said, and I'll just put it up here as well, um, we took a look at what would the plan look like if we did a conventional plan but still wanted to preserve open space, to still try to um, maintain and extend the trail system, et cetera. So we took a quick first pass at what that proposed plan could look like and how it would work. So we basically still have 32 lots within the 82-acre development parcel. What's changed a little bit is we now have 20 lots coming off of Chamberlain 
and, ten, and 12 watts coming off of Wayland. It is still shown with the two cul-de-sacs and the emergency access connector. What we were able to do, even as we're complying with the larger lot size, the greater frontage, and all the increased dimensional requirements under the conventional subdivision regulations, we were still able to, within this 82-acre parcel, preserve about 25 acres of open space, okay? So in addition to that, we would still look to be donating the additional 18 or so acres that zoned Office Park. So all in total, with this kind of first rough draft, We've got about 43 acres of open space that could be preserved while we're still complying with the conventional subdivision regulations. The way we were able to carve out, continue to carve out the open space um, allows us to continue and extend the trail system and it also still is, would be contiguous and adjacent to some of the open space already designated by the town from either our master plan or Berry Acres or the high school. So you can kind of see that we've maintained a perimeter kind of buffer of open space and then continuous with the office park land and the side. We took a first pass at what the trails could potentially look like. We just wanted to make sure that we could kind of extend and continue the trails throughout the property and the development. So we were able to achieve that. Uh, we have the same wetland crossings as we presented in the open space, one at Wayland and the same one where the emergency access road would cross over. The emergency access itself is within what we're considering the open space, so that was one of the issues that was brought up, so the area around that road would technically be preserved in perpetuity. So that's kind of the high level of the plan. So I think we accomplished, or we hope we accomplished, kind of a, a good compromise where we still have the 32 lots, we're complying with the conventional plan, we're putting a plan, a potential plan in front of the board where you could approve the two dead ends or cul-de-sacs with the emergency access road connector. Um, the emergency access road connector addresses the issues raised by the adjacent neighborhoods as far as mitigating the traffic that could potentially be going with a straight through road. We preserved open space and I think we're more in compliance with the overall goals of the town's master plan and open space goals. And just, just to get across, we're not approving tonight this plan. This is a theoretical plan saying if you do not approve the open space plan, this is what they plan to submit as a conventional plan. Under a traditional conventional plan, we're not required to designate any open space. We're not required to preserve the trails or the historic cellar hole. So, but we've tried to do that. Any questions from the board? Hey, John. Yes, you're right. John, on. every once in a while, Kathy fades away, so I missed that last statement. Muriel, I had just stated that under the conventional um, plan regulations, we're technically not required to have to designate or preserve open space, extend the trails, or maintain historical structures, but that's what we've tried to do with this hybrid or mixed plan um, that we have in front of you as a proposal, as a potential proposal. Right, so the one question I have is that we have lost from the, from the proposed open space plan, the theoretical proposed conventional plan, we've lost some potential protected open space, is that correct? If I heard you we correctly, can. the original open space plan was preserving about 62 acres of open space, and we have 43 acres preserved here. And that's primarily due to having larger lot size requirements and graded, greater frontage requirements under the conventional subdivision regulations. We go from having 100 feet of frontage and 40,000 square foot lots to having 200 feet of frontage and 60,000 square foot lots. So that just eats up more of the land just to get the development lots in. Did okay, that answer your that question? Yes, yeah, it Okay. Any questions from uh, the attendees in the audience? If you do, if you want to stand up, go to the microphone and uh, identify yeah, John, yourself. I do have a comment if that's okay. But um, about the trail structure, it looks like this is an improved, 
the trail structure looks like it flows a little more naturally. Um, is it, you're adding some trails behind some of the houses so they connect more in the middle. Potentially. Uh, so there, it could be all of this. It could go different ways. If there were some concerns about conservation land, we could potentially take another route versus down the middle. But with the public way and the emergency access road, that actually provides a way for people to you know, connect as well. So yeah. but we've tried to uh, actually extend what was there. So I think it looks much better and that people could still make use of the trails and mm -hmm. the property. Yeah. Through the chair. <coughs> yes. John, I just want to understand the process for tonight. So we're here we're looking at, you know, a rough copy of what will be resubmitted. But are our next steps to talk about the open space plan and then uh, potentially vote on that? Correct. So we have two choices, I think, the immediate next steps. And the two choices are we can continue going through the outline and cover the points on the outline. Or we can say, do we have enough information? Is there information that is missing that would say at this point we can make a vote, we can do a vote? And one of the items, I'm looking at Jennifer, who always tells me if I'm wrong or right, <laughs> is that we don't officially have from Conservation Commission a ruling on a number of lots that they would allow, so we could say that is, a, is an issue. Or we can also say that knowing that the plan submitted with the connector road and the two cul-de-sacs has been turned down, we can also say, okay, you know, let's stop at this point, take a vote, and do it that way. So I think it's up to a majority of the board on how to uh, proceed. Uh, I have a question to add on to David's. <clears throat> uh, so those two scenarios are explained quite well, thank you. Uh, wouldn't there also be a third scenario that is similar to, to other cases where uh, they would withdraw and come back with uh, an updated set of plans? But they, they uh, opted not to. Well, what we would do, if you choose to move forward with the open space, open space plan, the plan you have in front of you from what we understood last week is not approvable with the two cul-de-sacs and the emergency access road. So we would come back under the open space with a, with a plan showing a straight through cut through road. That plan is approvable from our viewpoint. So if the open space permit is denied, then we would come back under the conventional rules and regulations and reapply under those regs and rules with a plan similar to this. That's our, that's our understanding of how so it for works. For clarification, uh, would there be <coughs> additional administrative costs for that? Or it, that sounds like you're doing, we're going about it the more expensive way than the more straightforward way. We're assuming that we would incur the costs of filing again under the conventional plan. So, I was just going to say, I think I'd like to make a, a motion to, for a vote. Okay. Let me just check. Muriel, any comments? Yeah, I definitely have a couple questions. Okay. Speak uh -huh. loud and distinct because you're coming in a little muffled. Okay, thank you. Um, so, my first question is. Do we have um, a representative from the fire department who could speak to that access road? Yes, we do. Because uh, I remember not as part of this hearing, but the previous hearing, the fire department had issues with a non-full-size road. They would rather have no road from a full-size road. We're not talking about hey, that. If I can, can Muriel, since we're not talking about the plan to be submitted, that's that would come up at the consideration of the conventional plan. Well, it's part of it's part of the plan that's in front of us, and if we could get if we could get input on it, that would help us going forward, no matter what we did. If you, through you, Mr. Chair, I think we're all anticipating that this is going to be voted down. So I believe we all have the information well, that we let's need. Not say that. Okay. Yes. Okay. I mean, that's what has been discussed in the past. But I'm just repeating what a discussion. Six members of a board who have to vote, so let's yeah. not make any assumptions until there's a vote. Okay. 
So we have from the Muriel, I'll call. Who's here from the Who's here from the fire department? Thank you. <laughs> you want to just come up, just a brief statement on preferred connectivity, so to speak. Deputy Miller, Hawkington Fire. Um, as we stated in the past, for us to have an access road is very important to connect the two sides. And if we do do that, we have spoken before that we want the required 20 feet so we can have the passing of the vehicles. So if there's any problems, we're able to get two pieces of apparatus between each other. If we have to, what we call, lay a feeder line or bring water or anything like that, it's not going to hamper if we do that. Okay. And the 20-foot yeah. access road is what's shown on the current open space plan in front of you. Okay. okay. Muriel, any follow-up? No, thank you. Um, Wait, let me just see. Any follow-up? No, I'm fine. Okay, I, I did, some proceed, I did have you. a procedural question. Say that again. Procedural okay. question. When we, um, I know it's on our, agenda, our uh, outline that we vote and then close the hearing. And typically, um, in the past, I understood that public hearings would be closed and then the board could deliberate and vote. Um, so in the year and a half that I've worked with the planning board, the previous chairman has always requested that the close of the public hearing happen after the vote. So that's how I've always done it. If this board prefers to do it a different way, I'd be more than happy to change the outline. Okay, it's just a procedural question. I didn't know, it, it makes a little bit of sense to me that we take uh, just going forward, not necessarily this one, because we close the hearing, we close it for input and so forth, and we take the time to discuss and vote, um, which is why we have a certain amount of time after the close of the hearing to deliver a decision. I, I think his reasoning was more if, if during discussions the question came up or there was more input that was needed, that the hearings remain open so that that input could be gathered. Just as a, uh, I'm, I'm looking at the board, Muriel, you can't see, and what Muriel's question is, do we close the public hearing before the motion, a motion is made, what, and then we have our discussion, or do we keep the public hearing open the big, until after the vote is taken. The big difference is once the public hearing is closed, if the audience has any issues um, based on what we're saying, the discussion is closed and it's, it's stopped at that point. Not just the audience. If the board has any follow-up questions, it would be difficult okay. for the board to get additional information it, at that point as well. It seems reasonable to me that we would leave it open um, okay. for, for that reason. I agree. Okay. I agree. I think leave it open, Muriel. Yep, totally fine. Okay. Um, Anything more? I'm oh, sorry. Um, Gary Trendle, 31 Chamberlain Street. I have just a question for Mr. Miastrani. Can you confirm that this is the plan that you will move forward with um, if we go down this pathway of rejecting the open space and moving forward with the conventional plan? The conventional plan that we put forward to you uh, would be the plan that we, I mean, maybe, maybe some tweaks as we go through the process, but that would be the plan that we put forward. Okay, but can you at least confirm that it would have that uh, emergency access road as is shown in the design today? Okay. Yes, it will have the emergency access and I believe the 40 or so acres of open space and the preserved trails. Great, thank you. Any other comments from the audience? Peggy Barton, Sanctuary Lane. I'm a little confused because Chamberlain is designated as a scenic road. So doesn't that grant it any protection from any kind of tampering or at all? I, I don't understand why we're even designated that if it doesn't, you know, give us some rights or protection against any altering or. Well, I think it, uh, Jennifer, do you want to touch on a scenic road applies to? It applies to um, trees in the public way and, scenic, and stone walls in the public way. It prevents people from cutting down trees and removing stone walls in the public way without permission and approval from the planning board. It's the only thing that a scenic road designation does. Okay. One other question is, I, from the ruling that we got from the town council that you can't extend a dead end longer than 1,000 feet, to me, it seems like, isn't that the end of discussion? How can we even, you know, it seems like his only choice is to work with that 1,000 feet 
on both ends or not do anything at all. So why are we even, it seems like that's the end of the discussion to me. So how can we talk about extending it beyond 1,000 feet if the ruling is that we can't? Well, he, if, let me touch on it and then Jennifer correct me if I'm wrong. If he submitted a plan that showed a totally through road and Conservation Commission approved the crossing, they'd per be permitted to have a through road with a conventional plan. So it's not the cul-de-sacs are a limitation as opposed to an extension, so to speak. Under a conventional plan, we can grant an exception to the cul-de-sac thousand foot and say, town council has interpreted that as basically being two cul-de-sacs and that the cut through doesn't count as a road. That only applies to an open space plan and we're limited in an open space plan. In a conventional plan, we have the ability to waive the thousand feet, which we have done before. So if you're looking at restricting what can be done, the choice of not granting the cul-de-sac is that they come back with a conventional plan which will show a straight through 20-foot road. Uh, and if they grant, uh, get Conservation Commission approval and come in with a conventional plan that meets the requirements, they can do that. But you bring up a good point, so I just want to point a little advertising. We're going to be talking about Zach. Uh, if you have issues, we are restricted by the codification that's in our zoning laws. So if you think that something doesn't make sense, and I know you presented to, to Zach as suggestions before, it's the perfect opportunity this fall when Zach has their public hearing to suggest this should be changed. Okay, my head is spinning, but that's okay. okay. My, so following that, my last comment is, isn't there an overarching <clears throat> aspect here with the, um, the town master plan where wouldn't that be altering drastically the character of both neighborhoods? And that's my, that's my last okay. concern. And we can what it that. is is the zone, the master plan is a guidance. The zoning regulations are regulations. So the assumption is they're in harmony but we can't override a zoning regulation or inhibit a zoning right because it may be interpreted as not fitting the, the master plan. So it's, it's a very good point, but that's why when the zoning issues and nobody wants to address them comes up, it's really good having people like you to suggest, hey, let's take a look at it and bring it forth. Okay. Any more from Jennifer? No. Yes, come on up. Uh, my name is uh, Chuck Dauchy, uh, 25 Sanctuary Lane. Uh, a relatively new resident in town, but um, uh, retiring from uh, a career as a wetlands consultant and subdivision designer. Um, the uh, I certainly feel that the scenario proposed now is the optimum uh, for both the developer and the neighborhoods. Um, certainly a through road by right would be a detriment to the neighborhoods. But I also point out that under the state wetland regulations, uh, there uh, can be no wetland alteration, uh, such as a road crossing, if there is an alternative available with less impact. And I trust that the emergency crossing could be designed so that it would have less impact than a full standard subdivision road. And if that is the case, and the planning board 
agreed to grant a waiver of the standard subdivision regulations, then the applicant would be required to do the minimum, meaning a narrow width uh, crossing. What I would hope is that the planning board could give those of us present um, some assurance that in fact, as it has seemed in past discussion, uh, you are on board with granting a waiver to allow the emergency crossing rather than a standard width road. Thank you. And I'm going to address that. We always talk in the theoretical, and I really feel uncomfortable because plans submitted may change, don't know what the implications are. So until the plan is submitted and we go through the process, at that point, if you want to bring up the issue, bring it up at that point. But with so many things in between and members of the board who are not here, I, I, I'm not going to give you assurances that we'll go in one direction or the other because I, I, if it's not in front of us, which it, that plan is not at this point, I can't speak to it because I might not be voting, somebody else might not be voting, et cetera. So what I would suggest doing is when he submits the plan, get up there first <laughs> and bring it up as an issue then. Mr. Chair, point yes. of order. Um, I had an, uh, a proposal, a motion on the table, and there was never a second asked or a second denied. Do we have a second? Uh, hold on before you go. Oh, go ahead. The, on, the only reason I say this is because legally we can't approve it. So I think I'd like to move on from this step and, and take a step forward. So I don't know that we got your full motion, so can you just repeat? We didn't. Yeah, I, we so didn't the motion, a motion. motion for a vote on the current proposal. Well, you have to either vote to approve it or vote to deny it. <coughs> well, we just said we were going to vote on not how to vote. Like, are you voting to approve it or voting to deny the special permit? Is that your motion? What's your motion? My, my motion is to vote on what they have proposed to plan in front of us. Isn't that what we normally vote on? No, you, but, no. you have to state one way or the other so we yeah. can agree. All right, so my motion is to deny the vote. So you're voting on the, you're voting on the special permit for the open space preservation landscape development like, project that's in front of you. So you're either voting to approve the special permit or deny the special okay, permit. Okay, I'm voting to deny the special permit. Uh, I'm motioning to deny the special permit. If, if I may point through the chair, if and when, maybe Jen can answer this, if we do deny it, does it go against our zoning that we haven't given our due diligence to the developer? On, on, on his timeline at needing an answer, does it, does, it, does it go against us by doing what we need to do to give him a timely um, heads up to approve this plan, or do we take him and, and set him back on his? Can I discuss before a second? That's what they're doing right now. Can you just interrupt me? That's what they're doing right now. They're discussing it. Someone want to second it? I, mean, I would second it. Thank you. Well, can you repeat? I'm sorry, can you repeat your... My concern is that Mr. Mastriani has enough time under the under his... We, we allot a certain amount of time to get respond to his um, what do submittal. Mean, I don't know what you mean by certain amount of time. His submittal of, of, of a certain... Either it's an open space plan or, or a... Um, don't a certain amount of time. I don't know what you mean by a certain amount of time. Well, well, once it's in front of us, don't we have <coughs> to give him an answer either way? Yes, and you're that's, that's, what what that, that. that's what's right. on the table. Right. But are we at the end of that, or can we continue it? That's through, up to you guys to decide. Through, through you, Mr. Chair, I think Cliff might be thinking of after the public hearing is closed, we have a certain amount of time. To issue a decision. Yeah. I have a certain amount of time to write up the decision. decision. Yeah. Okay. With that being said, I'm sorry for the confusion on the table here. 
I apologize to everybody out on the floor. Um, I'm, I'm just trying to make sure that Mr. Mastriani has got everything he's, he needs and we're doing everything that we need to do. I concur. Okay, so Frank, uh, I'm through the chair. Point of discussion. Uh, well, let me have the procedural vote. Depending on how the procedure is worded, mm -hmm. which is the proposal, the, the, the <laughs> was to deny the plan. Deny the special permit. Deny the special permit. Do we need to go through two votes potentially? Because if it doesn't. Oh, because we did. It was just a majority. Mm -hmm. Never mind. Can you clear that up for me? No, no. no. Okay. Through, okay. through you, Mr. Chair. Things. All right, all right. Through you, Mr. Chair. I guess I would just ask if there's hesitance on the voting what from the board, what other information do you need? So, uh, could I make a little statement? Of, the reason I seconded the motion is that the only reason I would deny the open space permit is because it would require the cut through road, which the neighborhood has spoken out against so much. And that if the neighborhood didn't mind the cut through road, I think the open space plan would be preferable. But so that's the reason I'm making the motion to deny the open space or seconding the motion. Okay. Yeah, procedural. Uh, two things. One thing is uh, our, my colleague could make a motion to vote, and then we would vote if we wanted ready to vote or more discussion, and then there would be another motion to support or deny, um, just to add that level of Robert's rules. Um, so he wasn't off in his original idea. Um, but at this point in discussion through the chair um, uh, about the matter of voting, in, we're at the discussion point. Um, I think Cliff was asking if, if also getting to the point, maybe he, he didn't mention the rest of it, uh, have all the neighbors and developers, have everyone have their say and understand where we're at. And I, I think you missed the, the last meeting. We yeah. did a right. similar discussion at the last meeting. Yeah. All right. So I think everybody, we've been. But, but that's all at that point, they had just, were, were the developers were just re reviewing what was going on, and, and then they came back with this, and I'm just not sure. Well, this is, a, this, this is not up for discussion. This right. is no, a right. theoretical this, this plan. Is theoretical. This is not, yeah. Theoretical. This theory. The theory of turning down the open space and the theoretical plan was discussed at the last meeting. We yes. had lots of input on that. Three, so, three, Mr. Chair. Just to elaborate further, we cannot legally vote yes on this. No, that's not technically well, necessary. Our, well, our legal, okay, so can you just they, elaborate because our legal could, advice. They could resubmit a different, you can't approve the plan as submitted, but they could resubmit and you could approve a plan. Sure, I'm talking about what's in front of us right now. Right. Right, we, but if the board would prefer a different open space, and I'm not saying that's the way to go, but I'm just saying the board has an option to require them, if the board would prefer an open space plan, to submit a different open space plan that is approvable. So there is that option, but I'm not, I don't, it doesn't sound like the board prefers that option. And so. that, that open space plan is gonna have a, a cut through. It's gonna be a full right. I, to be honest with you, I don't care what the next step is. I think we just need to move on okay. this, so beyond this yeah. step. Basically your two steps are to vote tonight to deny the special permit. They will then go away. I will write up a decision. I will then write a decision that says that the special permit was denied, and once they have that in hand and no appeals have been filed, they can then submit for a conventional approval, hopefully, as submitted tonight. And then you would act as a regular approval, as a regular subdivision approval uh, under a conventional subdivision plan. And you would review design and traffic and all of that. That's, how, that's one step. Right. The other option is the board could decide, you know what, we would rather see them resubmit a different open space plan and go through the entire outline and see how that plays out before we make this decision and go through that process. And the board has that option too. So if okay. the board wants to go through all that process and do all that and go through the entire outline and make them resubmit, the board can do that too. So just so I'm clear to you, Mr. Chair, I think the developer preferred option one. That's, I thought that's. For you to deny the special permit and for us to be able to resubmit okay. as a conventional plan, that is our preference. Yeah. Would that be option one, Jen? Yeah. yeah. I guess. Okay, I'm gonna, <laughs> I, I think we've spent yes. lots of time confusing ourselves and confusing everybody else. So I'm gonna call for a vote and the vote has to be a roll call vote, correct? Yes, because Muriel is participating Muriel. remotely, yeah. 
Uh, so we have a vote uh, and a, a motion on the table to deny the special permit application. And just make an announcement that Cliff cannot vote. And Cliff has not had a chance to uh, watch the last meeting, so cannot vote. Uh, so Muriel, can I start with you? Uh, yeah, thank you, John. Um, I appreciate everybody's um, understanding that it is the developer's preference, the planning board's preference, and the neighbors in the community preference to avoid a full through road if at all possible, and that that cannot happen under the open space bylaw. The only way to do it is with a conventional club. I would vote yes to deny the current special permit. Thank you. Amy Ritterbush, I would vote, vote yes to deny the special permit for the same reasons. Uh, Kelly Carp, I vote yes to deny the special permit. Clifford Kissner abstains from the vote. Um, just for explaining our reasons, at least since Muriel has. Um, I would like to see an open space permit plan uh, presented to us that we can approve, that we're legally able to pr approve. Um, so in this matter, we're voting uh, yes to deny. Yes to deny. Or no to. Or just no. Not or just no. Right. No. Not, not deny. deny. <laughs> so I want to vote no, and the reason is because I would like to see a better open space plan submitted. Oh, Frank, you're going to get a throughway. If you say that it's a throughway, we build okay. the street going all the way through. I don't think oh, anybody okay. wants that. Yeah. Okay, we okay. can let's okay. do the vote. Yeah. Okay. Are you also Frank? Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Dave Paul, I made the motion, so I guess I better say <laughs> yes, I deny. And John Farrar, yes. I would just need a motion to close the public hearing. I move we close the public hearing. Second. Excuse me, before we All close, right. if we are just resubmitting a new plan, or are we refiling, or can I just submit? A new plan, and we continue with the public hearing. Oh no, it's with the this now. This is now been denied, okay. and you have to wait for a, the appeal period to be over, and then you submit a yeah. conventional subdivision plan application. Okay. No, I can't so submit a conventional subdivision. They just voted not to deny it, right? No, no, no you voted. No, no. Sorry, they voted. I thought we needed all six. No, <laughs> we needed all. <laughs> You needed all to approve it. You okay. Just needed a majority Thank to you, deny Mike. it. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, that's what I asked before and corrected myself. So what just happened is we turned down the application for an open space plan, and they are free to submit a conventional plan, and theoretically, what they are proposing will be what you see in front of you. So that's. The next step. And thank you, everybody. It's been a learning process for all of us. Thank you, Muriel, for taking the, the charge on this. Everybody liked the new explanations and procedures and etc. that we've instituted this year. So we need to close the public hearing. We'll close the public call vote for that. Oh. Okay, a motion to close the public hearing by roll call, Muriel. Muriel Kramer votes yes. Yes, she said yes. yes. Amy Ritterbush, yes. Kelly Carp, yes. Clifford Kistner, yes. John Farrar, yes. Frank Durso, yes. Dave Paul, yes. Thank you. Thank you all. So we have about 20 minutes. Right. And I see we'll cover some of the business to be considered. And Paul, if you finish up with Roy, we'll call Roy up to uh, uh, come Discuss. up with the proposed modifications to Legacy Farms Road South.
Good evening. Uh, thank you for having me this evening. I, I did submit some plans to you for requested modifications. We're hoping to finish paving Legacy Farms Road South in the next few weeks. And that will also include re-landscaping the shoulders of the road and reseeding and finishing the road so we can actually submit to the uh, town meeting for approval. We've had a couple of neighborhood meetings over the last few months, and there's been some concerns expressed by the neighbors in the neighborhood of the proposed granite curbing down at the center circle and at the main entrance as one drives in. Uh, frankly, safety concerns about turning radius, snow plowing, and things such as that. So we looked at the option of doing, and I had spoken to Weston Sampson and John Westerling about doing some thermoplastic lines, and I actually submitted some pictures to you also. Matter of fact, the lines that you see here are not thermal plastic, but are just regular paint, but the thermal would be far more durable and last a lot longer. And you'll actually notice almost near the front of the town hall, one of the pictures shows here of lines. Uh, there's some pictures here in white over at Mill Creek's development, and another one in town. And the idea is to, at the main entrance, where there's a lot of turning radius, and at the circle, where there are quite a few uh, delivery trucks, UPS trucks, things such as that, where we would pave it and then line it out appropriately, as shown on these plans, and uh, we feel have a much safer situation. And that is the request this evening. To you, Mr. Chair. Yes. I'm trying to remember what the center turned. I thought that was already existing and it curved. Is. Yes, it is. And it, curved. It, there's a granite curb. There's a landscape section. There's a large uh, beech tree in the center. This is actually a concentric circle outside that circle. Okay. And the idea is, if you watch the way people drive around that, they're driving over those edges. And the idea is to choke it down visually to slow people down, which this painting would do, but again, in a more safe condition, we believe. Okay, so just just to be clear, we're just talking about two sections, the entrance and the center area? The entrance and at the circle area, yes. Those okay, are the only two so areas. I'm clear on the circle area now that's just adding lines around the existing curbing. Can you just elaborate a little bit more what, what's proposed, what was originally proposed for the uh, uh, if you go beginning? To, if you go to the second Third. section uh, of plan where it says current plan, you'll see there's a second granite curb going around. There's a pavers in the center, and then there are these little granite islands that uh, really constrict the road itself. And the idea is to eliminate those, leave the center circle, and if you look at the next page where it says proposed, you'll see the hash mark areas. And what we're proposing is to do that in the thermal paint so when one comes around, it visually slows you down, but it doesn't create that what we believe is an unsafe situation with cars driving into them, driving over them, snow plows hitting them, that type of thing. Through the chair? Yes. Roy, would that be more, um, you're gonna keep the, the, the existing pavers in there now? Well, the existing granite circle with a planting in the center will stay. Yes. This is a concentric circle outside of that. Outside of that. Yes. So, so that does not show on the proposed plan. Well, actually, if you go to the last page where it says proposed, the yes. very last page, and you see those hashed lines, Yes. that's what it would look like. As opposed to the as cobblestone. As, opposed, I mean, as, the, as opposed to the raised granite edges. Raised yes. granite edges. And um, if I may interject on, on my own personal feeling about this is that um, I've seen some raised granites in, in situations all across the United States, I mean Massachusetts and the United States, where it narrows down, the granite does narrow down a lot of the turning ratio and everything else. And I've seen tires ripped in half, split open just by catching curbs and, uh, and the like. So I, I, I truly see how this can be a hindrance to the areas that we're talking about and so I just want people to know that as a even from where I live I see people running over curbs and hitting sidewalks and, and stuff and it's really um, especially we can look back to um, Starbucks and Unibank as an, a fine example you pull into there and you've got a, a raised curb entrance 
from off of West Main Street going in from coming from west to east and going into Verizon and such and I'm telling you there are cars all the time that are losing tires just from hitting that just so I just want people to know that there is a safety concern as far as I'm concerned three mr. chair um, I, I do not see an intermediate option here. You kind of gone to the extremes with the cheap version of just throwing paint over the pavement versus the curbs would be the very restrictive. But I've seen in a lot of places, and I don't think we have them in town here anywhere, where it's just a textured area. So if you go over, it kind of rumples your tires a little bit, but it's no big deal. You you could do a you could do an etched uh, bituminous. You could do a, a sort of a waffled effect on the bituminous. Again, in speaking to the neighbors in the community, they preferred this option because the kids riding bicycles and things such as that, they thought it was just a, a safer condition. If I may, for the chair, the kids aren't gonna be riding bicycles in the middle of a rotary. Uh, if there's anything that I'd like to see changed there is uh, a sign that says rotary and there's directional arrows, but maybe there's not so clear to some of the newer drivers to the neighborhood. We actually neighborhood. do have those. Hmm? We do have those. I, right, I, I see the directional arrows, but not a sign that says actually rotary. Um, I like to see this say, uh, the plan stay the same. I think it's nicer looking. I think it will be uh, f safe and effective. Um, and it's uh, one of the, a lot of the feedback we're getting is that the north side is going to look nicer than the south side. Well, this is something that makes the south side look nice once it's completed. And I don't want to go to just uh, paint on a road that will have to be replaced every so often um, I think the pavers will do their job effectively uh, there's a feel to the drivers if they're going in the wrong wrong area then they should be uh, for the for the little pyramid ones and if they're if they're going over the curb hitting the, the center ones then they have other problems than safety um, so uh, paint's not gonna stop them so I think the pavers will be very effective and I would like to see us keep the plan that is uh, in, in place just a quick clarification through the chair. Yes. Frank, were you referring to just the center one? Center and the directional ones. Okay, but what about this one yeah. up here? Because this is part of the plan as well. So this is... Yep, the whole, the whole deal. But, but this one is curving. So they actually want curving. Um, would you be open to something I mean, Maybe I'd be open to, on a top to a change, but... Uh, maybe just something uh, textured. The rotary itself, I, I don't want to see change at all. Um, good point, thank you. And, and I think I was maybe just a little misunderstood you a little bit about the center but through you mr. chair sorry yep so that center those are just pavers and it's really not going to harm anybody from driving over the pavers right well again you, you bring up a valid point the paint is one option the other option would be you we've all seen that sort of wavy concrete I think that would be a, a, probably the next set, next safest best option. What would, uh, this, how would that differ from the, the pavers around the circle right now? Because there's a raised. That's there's, actually a raised. That's yeah, like how. Oh, like yeah, it's raised up. It's, okay. You know, it, it, at minimum, I think all these surfaces. We can argue about texture and whether it should be concrete. I just don't think they should be raised. Okay. Up. I, I think that's think, a fair point. You know, it's one thing if they're up an inch, inch and a half, yep. or something like that. Just you know, a wave of concrete. But I just think that these are an accident waiting to happen when you have a six inch raised edge like that. And, and in your defense, I think it's a, an issue for plowing as well. well but for sure. I also had, a, had an opportunity to have a conversation with the fire chief, and he prefers the paint on the ground for his fire trucks as well. And uh, through the chair, I, a quick question. Um, you did say that the residents prefer the paint over the raised structure? They, they preferred something flat. Uh, are there, is there anyone here? I didn't ask them to come, but okay. I, I can, you know. For sure, I get a letter from the chair of the homeowners association. And they don't, they don't get notified unless the board decides it's a major change. So. Okay, I'm just curious. Through the chair? Yes. So to, to David's point, I think that we, we, we have the, the a wake up um, rumble strip along the highways. That's um, what we're talking about. So if that clears up anybody's intention on, or, or misunderstanding about what we're talking about. Um, so if that were, to be around the the, the, the center cul-de-sac and 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 stuff um, and coming up in inside those parameters would that would that be something that you guys would would consider on that? No, I, th I think we, we definitely would do that if that's with the board's preference. Um, we felt the thermal paint was 
the cleanest option, but if, if you want to go a step further, I think that rumbled concrete would be the next obvious step. And then to that, um, when we have a revitalization coming in for downtown, and most of our revitalization is on flat surface as, and painted as well for guidance throughout the, the center of town and everything else that we're, we're about to do. And the reason, one of the reasons we talked in, in great length when we looked at the master plan for that was that we, we felt that the raised, um, the raised areas would be detrimental to people crossing streets and everything else that we had at that time. So we, we had them go back and relook at that to see that what would be the safer plan. And we ended up coming up with something that was about the painting. So if, if we all recollect that, I think that's what it was. Go ahead. I, I was just going to say, I don't think I supported any painting. But let's, let's remove the theoretical about what could be coming in the future. I think we're all in agreement that we're OK without the raised. So um, I had a couple oh. of questions. Well, that's why I just wanted to make sure, because yeah. I thought <laughs> Frank and I wanted to agree with Frank that I, he just wants it to look nice. Right. And I totally agree with that. I, but Frank, can you just elaborate what I'm misunderstanding? Okay, just got Muriel, any comments? Yeah, so I first off I want to thank you for um, working with the neighbors on this. Um, my preference uh, would be to um, accommodate the neighbors' preferences. One thing that I worry about with uh, rumble slips is the rumble. Um, I know that it alerts the drivers, but I don't know, you know if the neighbors are going to appreciate the noise. Um, and I'd like to, you know, just give consideration to the fact that they have ways on them and they have uh, fixed the preference for um, an approach that is, you know, less intrusive and just the paint. Did anyone get get all of that? So she's concerned I think about you said it's concerned a concern about the noise, about the noise the from the rumble strips. strips. And I just elaborate that I'm OK with flat pavers or anything that just distinguishes it separately from the, the pavement. But, uh, I mean, I just want to reemphasize it. I mean, kind of what I was getting at with my question. And I think, Muriel, if I heard you correctly, this is, this is the resident's preference. They would prefer the painted lines. So while we all may have opinions of what Right. might look better um re really this is their preference and just you know, to be clear that wasn't their preference as Roy said he said they preferred a flat well I, I should i should clarify i told them that i was coming to the board and i said what what do you prefer and they said we'd prefer just painted lines i said well if if they won't let us do painted lines what would you prefer next because i assume that could be an issue and they said well whatever whatever we can do this flush flat Okay. Indistinguishable. So their preference for sure is painted lines. Next would be, I'll call it the rumble strip. Through the chair again, please. Yes. So, or, or frankly, the other option is if you didn't want to rumble, we could do just concrete. Just flat concrete with a, with a broom finish on it. So I had a couple of questions. Sorry. Well, so let's, uh, Cliff had asked first and then Amy. Okay, so, so I'm, I'm going into my memory bank and in, in, um, in Frank, the town of Franklin, right? Um, um, no, Norfolk. Norfolk has the same type of, of circular thing going on, and they put the pavers into, into the ground without any lip or anything right. else like that, right? I mean, but there's nothing there for that anybody to hit or be obstructed by. Is that, am I, I I'm not really sure. I think of Franklin, but yeah. It, but it, I it, know it, what you're talking about. You know what I'm talking about, downtown yeah. Norfolk. By the train station. Right. Yeah. Maybe. So, yeah. so, so, I mean. I, I, I would ask that, you know, there's three things I'd like you to consider. One, mm -hmm. the first preference of the neighbors being the painted lines. Sure. Second preference, if, if you're not willing to do that, is to consider the, probably I'll call it the broom finish or brush finish concrete in those same areas which would be flush to the pavement. So it would be a visual change in material, which I think psychologically has a bearing. Uh, I think those would be the most viable options, I think, visually. And there would be sawn and panels, so it would look attractive. But the first being the painted lines, which I know the neighbors would prefer. Okay, so I just wanted to confirm that, um, but whether it was safe um, from a pedestrian standpoint. So the pedestrians are on the sides, they don't go in the center. The pedestrians don't walk around the center. They are their sidewalks on 
be. Well, it's further. not so much walking as it is when you look at the way people, perfect examples when you drive in Legacy South from East Main Street, nobody ever turns the way this shows. I don't care what material you put there, they're going to cross over. <coughs> it's just the way people drive. When you get out of the circle, it's the same thing. When you look at this 12 foot ideal lane supposedly going around the circle, Nobody drives like that. So whatever you do for a surface, whether it's lines, concrete, whatever it is, people are going to skirt over it. But, so but is there a safe place for the pedestrians to be but that's separate from the Well, there's the a circle. sidewalk. Okay. The, no, there's the, definitely with, a sidewalk. With a, a high curb or something. Okay. Well, there's a sidewalk in the perimeter, yes. And so the, I was happy to hear the fire department like the flat surface. Um, was there an opinion from the police department about from safety standpoint? I didn't check with the police department. Okay. Thank you. Uh, through the chair, if I could respond to my colleague, our colleague. Um, I think what you had said earlier has some merit. Um, and I think a couple of questions for me to, would clarify um, a motion I would like to make on this, concerning this. Uh, so if I made through the chair to Mr. McDowell. Um, the current plan. Can you describe, uh, right now, currently, it's, it's not finished. Right? It's going to be finished. And uh, he's coming to us to make either a change or an adjustment to how this has been planned from a long time ago. So if, 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 if there's people that want to make these changes and they're just speaking through you, maybe they should also be here because it's the same perspective that we have, there's been boards ahead of us. Muriel's been on the board of selectmen when these things were originally being discussed and decided. So we should take into account a lot of the history um, and what the, the new people there are asking for. Um, and with that in mind, can you describe, um, as we're looking at the current plan for the rotary, uh, it's a raised surface, 25-foot uh, radius with grass currently um, in the middle. And then surrounding it is a mosaic, a mosaic of pavers. Uh, that is also raised? Yes. Because it's a double line? That is raised. If uh -huh. I could just back up for one minute. Um, this plan was designed 10 years ago. Yep. And in, in the, the nice thing about having this road been in for so long, we've had a long time to observe the way people use it. Not only during construction, which I would discount uh, because this construction is over, but we've had a good opportunity to observe. Uh, and by the way, when school buses come down the street, it's going to exacerbate the issue because you get a long vehicle. So we have had the chance to watch it during snowstorms. We've watched it during plowing. We've watched it during people driving on it. It's become quite evident. This I, I've, I've driven on it four seasons. Um, so basically, it's like a little bit of a birthday cake. You have a curb, pavers, and another curb, and the grass, correct? And, and, and the idea is not to drive on the pavers. The, the idea, but the reality is people are going to drive on whatever that is. Well, there's is. going to be a curb that looks like four and a half inches. And that, that'll be a, definitely a problem. Um, you, you're going to be having accidents at that point. If people are driving on a curb, I don't see how, if, it, if they're not following safety procedures, not driving on a curb is one of them. Um, so I, I don't see why this change is really needed. Um, but um, concerning the entryway, and if you look at the current plan as it's planned, it does show a raised uh, curb area with the dark line, which is, it doesn't say, it's like a foot wide, oh, 12 feet wide, no, 12 feet by 12 feet by 12 feet. Uh, so it's 12 feet in the center where people do drive when they come around a corner. Or, right. um, so that would slow them down if it's there, but it would also maybe hinder all traffic. Uh, the way it's currently designed. So I would like to make a motion that we approve the... Well, before, yeah. before you do that, you have to make a determination whether it's a minor change or a right. major change. Uh, and this is a minor change is what we're talking well, about? No, now. that's what we have to decide. We have to decide that. So why don't we have the discussion and then we do the two votes? All right. Okay. Any further discussion? So the first potential motion is that, is that this is a minor change the plan somebody want to make I, a motion? I would like to make a motion that this is a minor change second okay any discussion can you three mr chair can you just clarify give us a feel for it to be major and minor again okay. 
uh, a minor change. The board can make a decision now on a major change. You'd have to notify butters and have a public hearing process. Okay, thank you. So in front of us is a motion. We need a roll call vote on the motion that this is a minor change. Muriel? Muriel Kramer, I say yes. Amy Ritterbush, yes. Kelly Clark, yes. Clifford Kisner, yes. Frank Terso, yes. Dave Paul, yes. John Ferrari, yes. So it is a minor change. And I'd like to make a motion that we approve the changes as requested for the entryway uh, only at this time. Mr. Chairman, I'd like you to seriously consider uh, for the circle area as well, whether it be, if not lines, at least let us do it in concrete that's flush. So that way there it's visually distinguishable, yet it's not a safety concern. Well, we have the motion that is just the front. Do we have a second of that motion then? I would like to make an amendment to his motion. Okay. And that would be in taking into consideration the, the, the color differentiation of the two included into the proposed plan coming through because I, I, I strongly feel and I'm not trying to sway the board on so, the uh, just to, to clarify are you talking about both areas or just the entrance of me I'm talking about all areas in, inclusively that the pyramids be differentiated by color the center be differentiated. Okay. The, but the motion on the table is only to consider the entrance. Right. So, so was it seconded? Or? No, it wasn't seconded. It wasn't seconded. So why don't we do the procedural? Is there a second for that motion that we're only going to vote uh, and approve, the motion was to approve the entrance? Is there a second for that motion? Okay, so there's no second for the motion. So now, does somebody want to make a motion for... Is it back to discussion, maybe, or...? Well, I think we can... Let's open it up for discussion, and let's go on to the... Well, I you, just, just, you have a public hearing that's yes. at 8.30, so can you just open that? Well, that opens at 8.35. Oh, I'm sorry, 8.35, my best. You're, you're, you're missing our pit stop. <laughs> <laughs> the, yes. um, the only reason I didn't second that motion is because I, I would like to see both things addressed tonight. Okay. I guess, uh, if possible, I would like to see more options for the uh, something flat, but not just painted lines. If, can, so would we have to send them back to go do that, or could we vote on that? We might be able to work with them tonight. Depends on the developer, but Jennifer. Oh, can we? I mean, if he's willing to propose something this evening, I'm sure that's fine. Well, it so sounds yeah. to me like he has. So, well, I, I think I think that's what, what I sounds like. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, I think what I proposed. Obviously, the lines. You seem to be a little reticent on the lines. Um, so but let, let's talk about location. I'm at two different locations. All right. Could could we do this? Could we first, if you don't mind, I'd actually like to go back to uh, Mr. Durso's comment. If we could just approve the front entry with lines, yellow lines, I think we could all agree that makes the most physical I, sense at the entrance. I disagree. Okay. You disagree? Yeah, I think that even the Cliffs Point, if you look at the center of town, we're, we're, we're taking these lines that are just to be honest with you, the cheapest version for the developer, a quick quick fix, and we're converting them to nice looking brick or discoloration non tar areas. That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to make our town look nice. So I think we should do that for Legacy South. I think we should do the best we can to make so, it look nice. So let me ask Legacy you this. What, what, if we would yes. what if we were to consider at the front entrance, again, flush, but visually different, at the circle in these various islands, a colored concrete, in other words, something in like a charcoal tone, something that's a, a physically attractive and not just ordinary concrete. If we could agree on that, I think that would look nice and serve the purpose. Three, three, Mr. Chair, I would definitely be receptive to that, and I would just suggest if the board would agree and the developer that what I've seen in Shrewsbury with the red stamped concrete, something along that line, it seems like the red, it's not a bright red, it's like a you don't want red. Well, the stamp, but I just, I'd be careful of concrete and gray looking black just like well we could put a red dye in it if or, that's or what some, you like something reasonable you know to, to to my brother's point if it, it through the chair i apologize um if we do any stamping then the plows are going to tear it up 
that's my in my mind I see plows going over an area that is that is um, rough. Yeah, yeah, I'm okay without the stamping. I just use that as an example, okay. but it's right. different color, sorry. Yeah, yeah. So so I say so, smooth. So I say I'm even. sorry. If we could do if we could do again flush concrete at the entrance, concrete where it shows the islands in the in the circle. I don't care if it's red, green, I don't care really the color you want. We can dye it. We can dye it red. If you like red, we can dye it gray. We can dye it. Uh, I would defer to the ladies, especially the design well, review guess, board. Ladies. I was just going to ask, would it be possible to make a motion to approve it, but it would go to design review for the, the color? Actual I, color? I, I, I think that's or a problem. That's, that's, we're not going to get it done this year. Okay. And, and I have a question actually for you. So you, pref you have a color preference. You, you are okay with red, but not yellow. Is that correct? Well, yellow is a line. And I think the texture needs to be different. I, I think that's very important that the texture is different. Well, so I, I just want to distinguish, are we talking about colors, or are we talking about textures, or are we talking about both? Yes, both. 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 I, I think just think about what would look nice in your opinion, right? I mean, I, I'm not too I'm particular I'm fine with about the line, so I mean, that, so I, if I you're just, asking for my opinion, I, I'd be fine. I'm fine with the line because that's what the residents are fine with. Right. I, you know, I, I, I guess... That's where I'm. St where that's that's my stance on it at this yeah, point. Uh, the only point I would make is that all these towns that are trying to make things look nice is they're not just putting lines down. They're doing something extra: texture, yeah. color, something. Yeah. Muriel, um, how do you feel about that? So um, yeah, that's Muriel. So I get, thought I understood Roy to say that um, the residents only really consider the lines versus the raised concrete. Um, I I have a preference for the visual difference um, between the, the materials, of no rumble strip or no raising. Um, but I want to clarify that um, you know I want the residents to feel. Um, that you know, I want them to be accepting of that as an option. Well, I, I, I think if it's the safety was the biggest issue. I don't think it was so much visual. If, if again, if you don't want the lines, we can do the concrete. We can do it flush, as I had mentioned. Mm -hmm. uh, whether whether it's red, I mean, red is a, an acceptable color. It could be a light gray. It could be a dark gray. There's only so. You on hold one second. Should we vote to open the hearing you're going to yeah. motion to make a motion it. to open the hearing and suspend until okay the and suspended discussion. until the conclusion of this discussion second. we have a second so muriel we're voting on opening and suspending the start of the next hearing yep muriel kramer yes uh, amy vertebrush yes kelly carp yes clifford kisner yes john for yes frank dorsal yes Dave for yes okay thank you so Sorry. So do we have a motion? Yeah, uh, we don't have a motion right now. No. no could, I, could I make a different motion? Yes. So I would make a motion to consider instead of the painted lines, a red concrete that would be flush that would meet the residents' concerns about it staying flat. Uh, then I think like a, it's hard on to pick a color when there's no color. <laughs> on both here. aspects of this, right? Complete. Uh, on both aspects. And that would say a red, reddish brick color. Do we have a possible. second? Second. Discussion? Could somebody repeat the motion for me, please? The motion is on the floor that we make a, a motion to have both areas in discussion colored with a same level concrete that exists, or uh, 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 whether it be flush, concrete flush or the flush with pavement. the road, with the pavement. Well, I, I believe the motion was a specific color. Yeah, right? red. So, red, red, red color. If, we're in, if this is open for discussion, who's determining what red it is? Uh, right. I mean, what if it's fire engine red? I mean, are we going to be okay if, with that? If, if, if I could uh, interject, <laughs> um, the way you uh, get color in concrete is you add a dye to it. It comes in liquid, comes in powder. Yeah. It, the, there's a gray, there's a black, there's colors of gray, some black in between, and basically there's, there's a red. And the red is it's pretty much like a brick red. So there, there isn't a lot of variant in the red. I mean, we can make a little deeper red, a little less red, but it's basically like a brick red. That's that's a good point because that's what I've seen on Route Nine and Truth. Exactly. Exactly. I just would be more comfortable if we didn't specify color. That's all. I mean, I don't know. 
if that's an option. So just just from from afar, if I could see you, Mrs. Jordan, um, I'm not sure I'm comfortable with signing a color. I, I'd rather the resident have you know a, a, a choice on that if he wanted it. If I could make a comment on that, uh, if we could approve this to be the flush concrete this evening, and I will bring you a letter from the neighborhood association as to what their preference is, and then if you'd like to say either gray or red at that time, that's I'm fine with that. I'd be very comfortable with that. Okay, Just to comment to the I'm I'm amend, amend, the, amend the motion. Okay, so um, to make a motion to approve a flush concrete in a different color than the roadway. Um, the, that Mr. Dow McDowell will take back to the residents and come back to us, and we could at that, that time pick the, pick the color. Second. <laughs> we'll have color samples. I'll second that. Okay, so a friendly amendment. Uh, I'd like to keep the uh, pavers in place and the rotary. Discussion? Discussion. I actually would like to hear again once from the builder. If concern is a safety, then why do they have a problem with the four inch? Like it, like it is proposed here. Why do the neighbors have a problem with that? Because they feel like they're going to drive over it. Their guests are going to drive over it. There's going to be accidents, snow plowing. You know, you get these other mini islands, which are really problematic also. They would like to see it flush, number one. Number two, ideally painted lines, but if not, the colored concrete is fine. I, I am going to make an executive decision because <laughs> yeah. we have discussed this. Right. So if people, we have a vote coming up. If the vote is not acceptable, then I request people vote no if they're not in favor of it. But I think we've discussed this enough and we're, we're going back over the, the well, So are we thing. voting with the amendment? Or so we we're voting, no. uh, do we have a second of the amendment? No. Well, the maker of the motion has to accept the amendment. Oh. Ooh, all kinds of Sorry. Yeah, no, okay, no. <laughs> yeah. okay, so that was it. So I'm calling for a roll call vote. So the uh, Muriel? Muriel Kramer, yes. Amy Ritterbush, yes. Kelly Carp, yes. Clifford Kisner, yes. Frank Darso, no. Dave Paul, yes. Uh, John Ferrari, yes. And I still have a little bit of discussion about exactly what we were voting on. Kind of rushed through it there. Can I just well, make one comment? Yeah. I'm gonna close it because we're gonna have the opportunity to come back. Concrete. I know what a it. different color than the way. Okay. I mean, I would just like to. The color, then he'll come back to you with a choice. I was just thinking it would be nice for Roy to get a picture of an existing sample to show them they approve it and you show us we approve it. It just would be nice for the color. So so I, I, I will get you Thank color you. samples. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay. We have a motion to reopen the hearing. Continued public hearing, zero Ash Street Scenic Road permit. I'll make a motion. Second. 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 Uh, so it's reopening the suspended hearing. Muriel. Muriel Kramer, yes. Oh, yes. Amy Rodemich, yes. Kelly Clark, yes. Clifford Kisner, yes. Frank Durso, yes. Dave Paul, yes. John Farrar, yes. Unanimous. Okay. We've got nobody up here. <laughs> uh, so my question, did people have, uh, the reason we have the delay is, and the continuance, is to permit people to the board to go and, and do drive-bys. Um, any comments from the board in relation to what they observed? I just, for the record, I was not able to get out to the site prior, so I don't know if that prevents me from making any kind of vote. No, the one comment I have, I did drive by it again recently and I drove by it the first time, but it's hard to see where we're even talking about. It's not marked at all or anything. Maybe we should have asked them to put like a ribbon around the tree or something. Oh, there was at one point. I think it, the, it got rained on and it fell off. Mm -hmm. so you, can, it's kind of, you can sort of see it at the ground. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Frank. Um, talking about the drive-by? Yeah. Uh, yes, uh, I've been by a few times. Um, 
I've had a lot of people call me on this too. I tell them to call you guys as well, but um, the clearest and best access is through the, uh, the 145 and 147 access. Um, and I would like to ask that the town um, follow through with that and ask for an easement so that we can access our property. Um, it's the clearest and, and best way. The way by Arena Farms is very nice that they offer people to park there, um, but it's, it's not a bad walk up the street. And I, and I did appreciate uh, Jeff's, um, the chairman of the, board, of the, of the uh, Conservation Commission, the review of all the options uh, from last meeting. Um, but I disagree with his, his summary. Um, I think the current proposal for the parking lot is going to cost too much money, and it's 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 like building. Uh, it doesn't seem to be a fair investment when we have a gated access route uh, that we should have access through uh, readily available. Uh, I do think that would make a great Boy Scout project to access the property through uh, near the arena property, through where the <coughs> tree in question is, is located. Uh, it would make a nice little walk up and hike up there. Um, like I said, my son's Weeblo Dan at the time uh, handled the other access point, which is very thin, as, as Jennifer explained in the video. Uh, it is sometimes uh, very hard to access uh, through, and that's a lot more Boy Scout projects in the future. Great, but the main indirect access to this property remains the access road that Eversource created years ago, and uh, two of the neighbors bought a small strip of land that blocks the town. And there's questions about that that I can't answer that I have, um, I'm not even sure I should bring up, but uh, it's the best and clearest access to this property. There's uh, $400,000 of state money, $400,000 of town money uh, from CPC, and there was a CPC member and a planning board member who probably should um, work with us. I think he's, I haven't talked to him, but maybe he would be willing to work with the town to, uh, uh, Act to grant some access to the property. Uh, and I'd like to see the town follow up on that. Point of order, I believe. I, I don't feel comfortable talking about this with the picture we had up there, the seven or eight different sections, because Frank has bounced around about six different ones and lost me, on the sec lost me on the second one. So ju just to go over the criteria and what we're <clears throat> voting on is, uh, basically related to the removal of the trees mm -hmm. and the removal of part of the stone wall. And in order to make that determination, and I'm gonna read from Jennifer's memo to go over, the planning board's decision on any application for proposed work affecting scenic roads shall be based on consideration of the following criteria. The degree to which the proposed work would adversely affect the scenic and aesthetic values upon which the scenic road designation was originally based, the necessity for the proposed work in terms of public safety, welfare, or convenience, compensatory action proposed such as replacement of trees or walls, availability of reasonable alternatives to the proposed work which could reduce or eliminate anticipated damage to trees or stone walls, whether the proposed work would compromise or harm other environmental or historical values and consistency of the proposed work with previously adopted town plans and policies. So just as we frame the discussion, we've got to keep these in mind and whether the discussion falls within that. So I Amy. guess um, I said this at the last meeting too, like I don't object to the removal of trees. One of the trees has a fungus that's not gonna live very long and the other one is very small. So I'm a little bit stuck on, on the stone wall situation. I, I do think it might be a detriment to the scenic the qualities of the scenic road. The proposal is very close to houses, and so many of the other options were very close to houses. I, I think the ideal entrance is um, number D, which is near the old um, the farmhouse, but there's not, it's not wide enough to build a, a road there. So I, I feel like we're very stuck here. But at the same time, I believe if we turn this, even if we turn this down or we uh, allow it, it still is going to go to the selectman next. Anyway, is that correct? If you deny the scenic road application, I don't believe it will go to the selectmen because oh, it'll okay. be, you didn't give permission to cut the trees, so there's no reason to cut the trees. Okay. So <clears throat> I don't think we need to 
drag this out too longer because if we say yes, it still has to go one more step, but, or if we say no, we just say no. But a, a quick question, just to be clear, are there? So we have not found any other reasonable routes to this property. That I know we all have an opinion about what we'd like to see happen as far as accessing this property, but from a actual structural making it happen, are there any other routes to accessing this property that, that the town has been able to, yes. to provide? Yes. And Kelly, if you, if you looked at the property, I don't mean to put you on the spot, but and to clarify David's question, the three access locations we're discussing right now are nearby Arena Farms parking. Yep, no, I understand that. Yeah. Making the, the the driveway parking lot on the property where the tree is, yep. which is up a hill, Correct. like 15 feet high. Um, the gated access road that Eversource uh, built, NSTAR, whatever, years ago, that is owned, like a 20 foot strip, is owned by two neighbors, uh, blocking 400 acres, or whatever it is. Uh, and then the actual Elmwood Farm entrance way, which is, I think, 12 feet wide and then narrows down to like five feet and three feet or something. And it, it's really a strip of land legally that had to be included. Um, it's, uh, those are the, the three access points from Ash Street. And then uh, Elaine was going to get information back about uh, an access road from a back street but I never heard anything more about that. Uh, well, at the last meeting, uh, she provided the list of alternatives. Um, you weren't, you didn't, I, I you saw the Jeff's part, it. but I didn't see Elaine in it, here well, at least. It was in the packet that we would have received. So, so the, se the second part to my question, if I, if I could, if, if we deny, if we vote that they cannot cut down this tree and take the wall pieces out, and are we denying access to this property then altogether? Or does, is the town then going to find another way to access this? Are we forcing them to find another way? Or are they saying this is our only access point that we can, that we can find as a reasonable solution? Because my, my concern is, are we restricting ability to access the property that belongs to the town? So, so that, that's kind of what I'm, I'm getting at. Through Mr. Chair, I think there's, I believe there's access to it. I think it's par parking is the issue. Is that there's correct? There's pedestrian but, access. Right, so if we say no, are then we then saying, sorry, the rest of the town can't access this property that belongs to the town? To, to, uh, Jennifer, can you address the issue with the grant and the parking? And the <clears throat> I mean, I, I can't really speak to what the powers that be in the town will decide to do right. if this but gets denied but no but what the history requirement is why the, this is even there's a requirement that the town provides some public parking for Elwood Farm based on a land grant that was given to help purchase the property um, so that's what this is designed to okay. do um, we didn't feel that the two spaces provided at the no, it was at 97 Ash Street is enough. And so that's why they provided these additional four, proposed additional four. Um, so that's what this is for. Um, if this scenic road application gets denied, I can't speak to what right. people will decide yeah, to do. Just carry, okay. But as a planning board, I think that it's the right thing for us to do to uh, find the best solution and uh, I'm really troubled by this solution because we don't have a, someone on the board asked for a price associated with constructing a parking lot, having to go up the hill and, and remove the trees and things like that. And but that, but the, we never that, got that number. But that's not the application in front of you. The, uh, you're not reviewing true. the parking lot but as we, a site plan. You're but reviewing. one thing leads to another. And I but think if someone if, comes before you no. to build a home and you at, need to just do a scenic road for their driveway, you don't ask how much it costs to build their house. If it's my house, I would be concerned about well, it. It's your house. And this is our town. I'm gonna, we have a responsibility as elected members to uh, keep I that in mind. Before the next step, a couple of things I, I want to bring up. We've got a limited scope here on what we're looking at. Right. And I'm going to make an editorial comment 
that is one, uh, part of the reason we're doing this is a grant. And at times, we all fall to the, if we do it, we get free money and we gotta do it fast and we gotta get the application in and people don't look at the catch at the end of what's necessary. So my editorial comment is, as we're trying to grasp at the free money that every so often pops up in this town, we may in fact be changing the character of the town and doing things that we would not necessarily do just to get the free money and people forget to ask, what's the catch? So my editorial comment, just because I'm old and I figure I can give it, <laughs> is, is to say that. The other item that we should keep in mind, and I don't like any of the options here. I mean, let's be honest, I don't like any of them. But we have another town committee who we work with closely, who has made a proposal and said, we have looked at all the options, and this is the option that we're push putting forth. And they and their expertise has said that. We and our expertise make decisions on behalf of our board and other committees do. So one of the things to think about, and I'm not saying, I haven't decided what my Apparently, decision is going to be. Apparently, because it's opposite. Totally opposite, but the decision is, when the vote is taken, if we get to a vote and somebody makes the motion, is we have another board in town who has said, we've looked at all the options, and in our determination, this is what we're recommending. And based on yeah. the tree removal, and we all kind of agree looking at the tree that the uh, tree probably has to come down anyway, and the stone wall <coughs> we look at and we've granted those and made the changes. So now we're making the decision based on basically almost D, availability of reasonable alternatives to the proposed work, and maybe some of the other ones that, that are there. And another board in town has stated you that, said that three times. That, well, I'm, I'm just stating because it has to be stated three times. Mm -hmm. We've discussed many other things more times than that. Mm -hmm. But just a realization, we have another board that has made a recommendation. So now we're going to whatever the decision is, we have to realize that that's the case. If I may, through the chair, um, if I was here last week, I, I would have opposed, I would have questioned what Jeff had said. Um, and also, the Conservation Commission is not united on this. and. Uh, there are conservation board members who are against this project uh, as well for reasons of, of um, fairness uh, and other things that are going on about it. So I think I would like to ask us to reject this based on the fact that we don't have an answer on the gatehouse. Why don't, you know, why can't we try to work this out, have an official determination to work out something like that. And if the only way we can do that is to reject what's in front of us, then I have no problem doing that because as I said, in the future, the, the location we're talking about would make a great scout project, but I don't see spending thirty or $40,000 of town money to do this um, is, is anywhere fair to the neighbors that live there or, um, or the neighbors that live uh, and have, are blocking access where there is a gate constructed specifically to access this property. Muriel, did I hear you? Yeah, you did. Um, so you were saying that there's another board that's making the first level. I thought it was just the, the town is putting this forward. No, kind of, this is a proposal of the Conservation Commission. Uh, okay, thank you for that clarification. Um, so they have a vote they want out entrance way. This is what Jeff presented as his, uh, his, uh, his opinion, but the board is not united. I don't know was if there a vote, vote of the board? Yeah. What was the vote? I can't speak to that. I don't know if there was a vote of the conservation. I don't work with the conservation. I'm here when they're meetings. His, yeah. Historically, we had asked for information from the CONCOM, and two of the members came to the uh, previous meeting. I mean, they're the applicant yeah, on the project, so I would imagine there was some kind of discussion at a conservation commission meeting and some kind of vote, but. I, I'm here when they're at the meeting, so. 
Are you okay. making a motion to reject it, Frank? <laughs> I so, do make so that I, motion. I just want to say, I just want to say that um, in general, John, I, I totally agree with you, but I would want to support the vote in the needs of another vote first. Um, and and um, it, however, recognizing our jurisdiction is about the scenic road and the decree and the stone wall, um, for me, for me, there's, there's some safety issues there. But it, it's a bit like taking a, a tooth out of the, of the smile on that scenic road. It really is a big impact to the um, to the scenic road and the, and why we even have that designation. And in particular, on that street at that spot, it's going to be a huge imposition um, in in the in the, the street space as well as for the neighbors. So. Um, in general, I would agree with you, John, but, but I really, you know, I know that we have, whether it's easy or not, we have another access to the top of that floor, and um, I really, you know, I really don't want to take that tree and that stone wall to any possible way we can avoid doing that. Point, point of order, I believe, it wasn't quite clear, but I believe Frank was making a motion. To reject. I'd like to make a motion we reject based on primarily item D, availability of reasonable alternatives to proposed work which could reduce or eliminate anticipated damage to trees or stone walls. Specifically, there is a gated entrance way that two uh, neighbors own next to 145 and 147 or 149 Ash Street. That is a white wooden gate, uh, approximately 12 feet wide. And uh, it's a road that leads out into the property. And uh, right now, two neighbors own uh, 20 feet of access, I believe. And uh, we should talk to them as a town, officially. Um, I don't think you wanted all that in your motion, did you? No, no, that, that was the reason, <laughs> reason behind it is specifically reason D, but also reason F. And the reason F is consistency of the proposed work with previously adopted town plans and policies. To wit, there is uh, some issues that people have because one of the people that uh, purchased the land, uh, half of the land we're talking about, was on the planning board, was on CPC, and um, there's questions about that that I cannot answer, and I feel Point that order, it's please. inconsistent yeah. with could, uh, could, could town plans and policies. Yeah. Could you just state the motion and we could have discussion yes. after? I, <laughs> sorry. Uh, the motion is that we, uh, vote no uh, for this. Do we second. Have, we have a second. Discussion? I, I just wanted to say that I, I really do wish the public had better access to Elmwood Farm. I'm just not, I'm not convinced that there, we, there are other places where we wouldn't have to remove the stone wall. And I, if, if we deny this, can they, could they bring it back at the same spot again later? It, or they could. Okay. So then I'm, I'm comfortable with that. And, and I just would like to say um, kind of on what you just mentioned, I don't think it's, I don't think we're the experts on determining whether or not it's the right access Place. point. Uh, I think to your point earlier, there is a group in town that's already done the research and they've decided that this is the right access point. We and don't know that. Well, we, but we kind of have to assume that Trust. they know how to do their job. Last, last meeting there was two okay. members on, from no, that committee on opposing sides. Frank. So you can't say the same thing. So, so my point is, I think we need to stick to our charge, which is to talk about the tree and the wall, and and that's really where I think we're at. Through you, Mr. Chair. Yes. Just my own opinion. I'm kind of agreeing with what I'm hearing that it's it's going to be detrimental to it being a scenic road. The, the neighbors do not want it, and to John's point, I was thinking the same thing. I don't want to just take do this for because we're getting the money. So that's why I'm going to vote against it. Is there a second? I seconded it. I'm sorry, thank you. After I made him stop talking. Thank you. John? Anyone? Okay, let's take a uh, vote, roll call vote. Oh. Muriel? Let's say it's a public hearing. So oh, did you want to ask? Oh, public? sorry. It is a public hearing. Anybody from the public want to come up and. Good point. Okay, yes. Oh, now, if you can identify yourself and your address. 
Sure. Uh, Jay Crochet, 153 Ash Street. Um, first of all, I appreciate the, the thoughtful debate on this. Uh, I'm a direct abutter to the proposed parking lot. And um, uh, one thing I would say is, uh, you know, if this does get denied, um, that certainly uh, make me happy. Um, based on a lot of the discussion, but if it, if it does move forward in any stretch, I would just really encourage each and every one of you, not just to drive by, but to park your car, walk to the site, stand there, watch the traffic come by, watch cars wind up at the corner of Front and Ash, and come zipping by at about 50 miles an hour on a very tight, dangerous corner. You're gonna have a lot of cars, a lot more cars coming in and out of that four parking space lot. It's going to be dangerous. There will be accidents. Um, coming out of my driveway is an adventure on a daily basis. Uh, for me, for my teenage son who just got his, his uh, driver's license, for our neighbors uh, who are here, it's a tight little corner. And the posted speed limit of 15 miles an hour, I think people think they should double that and add 10. Because I tell you, that's not even an exaggeration. It's a really dangerous spot from a public safety perspective. Uh, among everything else. I think that uh, the spot that Frank uh, mentioned between uh, the Eversource uh, entrance there, it's a straighter, uh, cleaner visibility, a line of sight place for cars to come in and out. So I would really encourage each and every one of you, park your car at arenas. You can park in my driveway if you'd like. I'm at 153. Go stand where the parking lot is proposed and just stand there for 10 minutes and just watch the traffic. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Come on up. Uh, Jenica West, 162 Ash Street. Um, I live right across the street from the proposed driveway. I've lived there for 45 years now. I've seen a lot of accidents in my time. The street in that area is posted 15 miles an hour. No one, no one, including the school buses, do 15 miles an hour. There are near misses there all the time. My husband had an altercation with a driver who was bombing up the road, nearly hit him and the dog. And it's just a bad, bad place. It's an accident waiting to happen. And the thing is, you make the decision to go ahead with that. The responsibility, who does it fall on? You, you're well aware that it's an accident about to happen and there are better alternatives for it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Three, Mr. Chair, I just had one more thought you might want to share. Yes. So I think if this does get voted down that I would like to suggest to the town that they put a trailhead marker there because nobody even knows that this is available at the trail and then if we find that we have a good spot for entrance we could always move that trailhead but I mean I think it would be a good idea just to call out trailheads where we're, where they're available in town trailheads there is, I should, could say there is a trailhead sign it over by the farmhouse uh, there is yeah, yeah Sudbury Valley yeah. trustee okay thank you you mean can I take with that mm -hmm. come on up thank you Alice Crochet 153 Ash Ash Street and um I'm one of the abutters um, that the parking lot would directly, you know, would abut my driveway. Um, and I just thought of an option yesterday to another place for a trailhead. And um, Center School will be closing soon. I don't know the exact time when the new school will be completed. But um, if you go into the parking lot, you know, way back into the parking lot of Center School, the trailhead can be right there because that's where the trail comes out. So I don't know if anyone has even thought about that or, I mean. That's a great just, idea. Just um, an idea. But there's different, there was the same pr original property, but uh, the town already owns back there and it does all connect, um, but it wouldn't be a bad solution. Well, I, I'll just say one more thing. So if the parking lot were to be put in by the road, parking lot, four spaces, um, then there would be a trail along, just right next to my driveway, along my driveway, 
along my yard, behind my yard, and the other, okay. I've walked on trails, and I know that typically, um, you know, the trails are behind people's backyards. No, but this is not just behind my backyard. This is my, this is, this is um, nearly my whole perimeter. Yeah, well, excluding the other side. So. To, uh, to be fair, there's still gonna maybe be a foot trail there with a trailhead, but not, uh, hopefully not parking. Okay. Okay, thank you. Jane Moran, 70 East Main Street. I'm also chair of the Upper Charles Trail. And to your point, that's a valid point. We've been looking at that property behind the center school as being part of, um, possibly being part of the Upper Charles Trail. It may, the Upper Charles Trail won't go as far back as this property, but there definitely is availability to hook up with that. It would take some work and some resources from the town and some planning. And just as a side note, we're trying to encourage the Board of Selectmen to establish a trails committee, a townwide trails committee. And a townwide trails committee could take on some of these larger projects that are becoming an issue. People seem to be very interested in trails and continuity and contiguity between all of the trails, all of our valuable resources. So there are other resources out there and it seems as though I know from our committee's perspective, we try to respect what the neighbors are asking for as well. And to your point also, it is a valuable and beautiful piece of property, this 400 acres. So we do um, have a responsibility to take in all of the options. And um, I think that that might be a valuable one that you're suggesting. We've looked at it too. We just haven't. It's not appropriate as for us to come forward at this time, but seeing as this is such a hot topic, hot topic right now, we thought add some input. Okay. Thank, you, thank Jane. you, And through the chair, I want to thank uh, Jane Moran. She is um, the grandmother of a prospective Eagle Scout doing a project Saturday. So um, there's a lot of uh, scouts in our town that do a lot of good work. So right. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? Any comments from the board? We have a motion on the table, and let's take a vote. Muriel? Can I just ask you to read the motion? To deny the scenic road permit. Yes. I couldn't hear, but. What did she say? Yes. yes. Okay. Uh, Amy Rutterbush, yes, motion to deny her. Um, I'm going to vote. Yes, motion to deny with hesitation. <laughs> Only because we haven't been presented any viable alternatives and I, I do feel like we have an obligation to um, allow people to access that property. Um, but I just wanted to put that out there. And I second that is that I, I say make a motion to deny but with a caveat, and that caveat would be that we look at other um, opportunities that come before us, and that in the future this will, this could come back for us to for discussion. Uh, Frank Durso, yes. Dave Paul, yes, and I'm going to make it a point to try to hike that trail before the cold weather sets in. <laughs> and I agree with Kelly's uh, comments, but just to be a contrarian, I'm going to vote abstain. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I just need a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. I move that we close the public hearing on the issue of the uh, Stonewall Tree on Ash Street. We have a second. 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 We have a second. Okay, we need a roll call vote. Muriel? Amy Ritterbush, yes. Kelly Corp, yes. Clifford Kissner, yes. Frank Durso, yes. Dave Paul, and I feel like California, like my vote doesn't really matter. <laughs> <laughs> yes. John Farr, yes. Public hearing is closed. Okay. 
Next on the agenda, let's uh, lot release for 11 Penny Meadow Lane. Yep. And I believe you're presenting that. Yes, I am. Um, we have a bond um, for $66,862. Um, I see no reason why the board can't sign a lot release for lot number four. So it's just a formality for the board to vote to sign the form K. And then I need your signatures. You need a motion? No. Member O'Connor. <laughs> we don't have a motion yet. No motion. We wonder if there's a motion. Oh, I'll, I'll make a motion. Yeah, I'll make a motion. I'm, I'm sorry, I was like totally in my own little world. I'll make a motion to release uh, the property. Second. Second. Uh, discussion? Roll call vote. Muriel? Muriel Kramer, yes. Amy Ritterbush, yes. Kelly Carp, yes. Clifford Kissner, yes. Frank Durso, yes. Dave Paul, yes. John Ferrari, yes. Yes. No, no. Is it right, right across here? Yes, please. How many do we need? Uh, uh, majority, but if you're all here, you can still sign. Um, approval not required plan. Yes. 11C. Uh, yes. So um, this plan um, is. The lot right now is one you, house lot, and they're proposing to divide it into three parcels, two of which will have fronted on C Street. One has right now has an existing historic structure, which has a an existing demo delay um, by the Historic Commission, um, and then they'll have another buildable lot, and then they're proposing to carve off the back parcel, which is about uh, which I'd say 258,000 square feet um, and to preserve that as open space and potentially donate the halt. So that's this is C Street here? This is C Street. Were any other here. streets? Where? Uh, no. And so this is the existing house that has a demo delay on it at the moment. So uh, th what street is this? This is like... Um, is it Cedar Street? Cedar Street. Cedar Street, yeah. And it just kind of so these are the houses on Cedar Street, probably, right? Yep. So where the other side is Walcott. And then this back parcel is what would be preserved. Oh, this is the open space? Yep. Oh, I thought you said three lots. How are yep. That is so the right one, two, one, two, three. Right. And that's the gas line going through. Because it's all over the space. Yep, so the lot line for the open space looks okay. like this. It sits in A&R? Yes. So right now you said there's a historical hold on that, yeah. and that le it runs out when? In December. Mm -hmm. It's really interesting. Bench. It's a um, it's a pilot shelter. Like, wow. Yeah, the little. In the fifties. Yeah. It still has a slot in the mm -hmm. board. And, and you're on the committee that. I'm not. Oh, um, you are. The historical committee. I'm in the historic district commission. This is oh, the district. district. So we're going to sign it if everybody's okay well, with it. Well, they okay. Take a vote. Take it's a all the criteria for a DNR plan. So I just need a vote. And then a two motion. signatures and a date. Uh, I'm sorry. I can't sign yet. I'm not signing. Hold on. Sitting so you're looking for a motion to approve? Yes. yes I make the motion to approve. Second. No second? Oh, sorry. I thought you were second. Second. Discussion? discussion? There was a discussion in a zoning bylaw change three or four years ago at town meeting, um, I would, Ken has really good knowledge in um, John Patino, they presented it. Um, it was about lining up properties in zones and I believe it covered this area. Um, so I guess my question goes to, uh, it is ANR, so if we don't sign it, you know, then doesn't time matter. buys, doesn't matter. But the question is, does the remaining lot size, is that actually large enough? Can we actually, do accept this because of the, I think we made zoning bylaw changes that really, I don't think we can really accept this clearly. Is that? Why? We're not, what do you mean? There was a zoning bylaw change downtown properties and I remember the questions came up, but why are you bringing this up like one thing at a time is because. It took split uh, properties yes. that were crossing uh, where the zoning line bisected the property, put the property in the more restrictive zoning area. But I don't think this was affected. But this is splitting, so I'm wondering, would this affect? The, no one's going to try to build here because of the gas lines. No, so because it's it's. It's going to be preserved as open space. 
open space. So once it's open space, it's open space. Yes, right. it's gonna have a restriction on it. Right. And the remaining property, if they want to build anything different, but this there is, is it. no remaining property. It's just this two this. lots. That's it. And those are buildable lots, and those will all be in just the one district. So the open space won't be owned by the town, though. Be open by the. Um, owner. Uh, when I talked to the surveyor, he mentioned halts. Parking and area land trust is the entity to own open space. So, so if this does fall into a different zone, it doesn't matter. It's open space. Okay. okay. So we're not we're not creating a problem. We're just creating yes. two lots. Okay. Roll call vote. Muriel. Uh, yes. Muriel Kramer. Yes. Um, Amy Rudder. Uh Kelly Carp. Yes. Clifford Kistner. Yes. Dave Paul. Yes. Frank Derso. Yes. John Ferrari. Yes. So I just need two signatures and a date, please. Okay. August 14th, right? Yes. Um, if you saw on your package Sorry. the uh, Zach letter, mm -hmm. uh, <coughs> any questions, comments? Excuse me, I'm sorry. Et cetera? I mean, if I sign all of them. Oh. No, I sign both copies. Right. Uh, no, just the top one. Oh, okay. Okay, we don't have to vote on that. It's no, just, just um, we'll be, I'll be sending it out um, this week sometime, and then at your meeting on September 11th, you'll be making appointments from those that have submitted interest cards. So if there's no changes to that, I'll go ahead and send it out as is. Okay. So can I just ask a question? Well, the if more people apply than there are slots, will they come so we don't to really have a, We don't have a specific number oh, okay. requirement on Zach. We usually just take everybody who's interested. It's never really been an issue. If it becomes too cumbersome, mm -hmm. we might have to consider limiting it. But okay. we've had as many as 15 before, so. OK. Uh, minutes from July 24th. Do people have a chance to review? Any questions? Or? Oh. We we'll make a motion to accept. So moved. Second. Second. Okay, Kelly, it's seconds. Okay, Muriel. Muriel Kramer, yes. Amy Ritterbush, yes. Kelly Carp, yes. Clifford Kistner, yes. Frank Terso, yes. Dave Paul, yes. John Ferrari, yes. Uh, any board member comments, correspondence, hate mail? <laughs> I just want to bring tonight, up. After tonight, you were right you, Mr. Yeah. Chair. I just want to bring up one quick point, and I've kind of been um, laboring the point here, but I'm just thinking about that, and Amy probably can relate to this. But the the billboard in Westboro, I kind of feel like we should send something to the Westboro Planning Board about the comment that it's shining so much light in the section of Hopkinton and just like who approved the board and what what's to keep from approving more billboards on on uh, the mass bike okay i hadn't noticed no that. i just thought yeah. i thought somebody said it oh you know who was um somebody said it in the design somebody review somebody in design review yeah noticed it and i i notice it all the time so but there's a new billboard in westboro it's right on flanders road intersection of flanders road i believe and, uh, it's mass on cumberland farm property yeah right on or all the pike right next to it right and but it's light pollution within Hopkinton, it's the problem. But it's like yeah, three or four houses, five houses, and maybe we would see it. Um, but yeah, it's very bright. It's like when yeah. they put it up a month or two ago, maybe longer. To, to be honest with you, I'm, I'm anti billboard, and I was just looking for a way for <laughs> Hopkinton to, you know, both complain and find out like how it happened and how it keeps from <laughs> happening again. The, but the, I, don't, I don't know if it's something we'd want to consider. The bridge crossing Sudbury River into Hopkinton is the, probably the best place you can see it. If you can say best is the right word. Um, but then it's a lot of woods and trees, and you can see it through the woods and trees more in the, like in the fall. Yeah. Um, so it's it's not really so much. Like it's, it's it's bad, but it's not terribly bad. But it's uh, there are four or five houses that it could be, in, you know. So what I would suggest is people drive by, and if right. they have an issue, people that'd be can, great. But yeah, just make people I, aware of it for now. Go ahead and do what they I want would, to I do, but as a board. Ask the board to think about sending a letter to another town no, that's what planning I'm saying. board about No, that's that. what I'm saying, but I don't think <laughs> as a planning board that. we should take well, any we, action related to sure that something that's, that's happening. Well, it's a good neighbor policy if, if there's a neighbor. You know, I mean. 
We have a motion to close the meeting. Controversial stuff. I motion, so motion to close the meeting. Second. Second. Muriel? No one from yes. Amy Ritterbush, yes. Kelly Carp, yes. Clifford Kissner, yes. Frank Dursel, yes. Dave Paul, yes. John Forer, yes. Meeting is closed. When's the next meeting? 28. Very sweet. I missed that. Now, Ted, you're out of here. That felt a little awkward tonight for some reason. Yeah. Didn't you think? I don't know. Contentiousness among the board members. I think the 28th is two days after my birthday, but I will still be accepted. Yes.